I am here with Clay Collard, PFL lightweight fighting Shane Burgos on August 23rd during the playoffs. This is a big fight, Clay. Um, I want to start a little before that. I mean, last season didn't go your way. This season, you have definitely bounced back. Two wins coming off a big finish. I mean, has anything changed in terms of how you're approaching these fights or your preparation, or is it just a matter of, you know, you stayed the course and things are starting to go your way? Um, so this year, uh, at the beginning of 2023, I actually started with a new camp. So um, I went back with an old coach. My previous coach was <clears throat> had, had some things going on. So, um, yeah, I've, I've got with a new, uh, I've got with a new, he's an old coach, but I've got, got back with him. Um, and I, I feel like that's been, been a big part of it. And then, yeah, well, I mean, we're just keeping the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing right now is winning fights. Well, the main thing, obviously, in the playoffs is winning fights. And I'm wondering if the mindset here changes at all. During the, the season, you got to worry about points. You might need to worry about finishes. Now it's win or move on. So does that kind of change anything for you? Uh, I mean, for most people, it might. Me, I just, uh, I'm still going to go out there and try to knock him out in the first round, you know. Uh, I'm going to try to fin finish him as quick as possible. Um, so we're still trying to get that first round finish and earn those points where even though there's not no points, it just makes my job a whole lot easier if I get him out there, you know? Absolutely. And I'm going to talk about Shane in a moment, but I wanted to go back a little on that front. Originally, this would have been Natan Schult, I guess. And uh, we saw what happened there. He had a fight with a good friend in House Manfio. And you know, the PFL said, hey, you, you didn't engage enough. We're pulling you from the playoffs. What was your take on that whole situation? Um, you know, I, I try not to think too much about it. Uh, I, I think uh, the the computer system had Hosh throwing four punches in the first round. I'm like, I throw more punches than that in the first three seconds, you know? So um, it is what it is. PFL made the made the decision to, to move Schultz out and move Burgos up. And I don't get, I don't give a shit either way, man. Fair enough. Have you ever been put in a similar situation, though, where, you know, you've got to fight a, fight a friend or a training partner that you really didn't want to be in? I have not, but, I mean, I, I don't care if you're my best friend. You're locked in a cage with me. We're scrapping. I, I, I was joking on a few uh, interviews before, and I was saying me and my little brother have tougher sparring matches than that fight. And, like, the last time me and my brother sparred, he left with two black eyes. He judo tossed me on my head. Like, we were we were scrapping harder than, than they were just training, you know? So, yeah, I, I don't think that would happen to me. Uh, I'm going out there to scrap, you know, regardless if you're my friend, my brother, my you know, my uncle, I don't I don't care. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it all on the line, like fighting sacred to me, you know. That's gotta make for some interesting family dinners. I was an only child, I missed the the brotherly scraps. Is that like you two have been like that your whole lives or Yeah, you know, me and my brothers, we were all fighters, so uh he's coming up as a pro, he's uh like three and one or three and two, something like that. So, yeah, we we definitely get into it. It's all love, you know. We, we beat each other up, and then after we go get lunch together or dinner together and talk about, you know, our sparring match and, oh, I, I caught you with this and you caught me with that. And, you know, it's just, it's all in love, so. That's very cool. I mean, you know, as you progress in your career and eventually it'll come to an end like everyone's, is something like coaching, uh, would that appeal to you? Yeah, man, I'm always going to be involved in, in combat sports and mixed martial arts. It's uh, 
it's something I'm very passionate about. Uh, it's something that keeps me sane, you know. So uh, I definitely think getting into coaching and, and helping the, the younger generation, you know, coming up, I think that's definitely something in the in the cards for me. Very cool. Now, we got to talk about it. Shane Burgos, obviously a big name coming up. And, you know, in a way, did this switch actually help you a little bit? I mean, just in terms of the anticipation, this feels like a, a more exciting matchup almost. I, man, I don't really care who I'm fighting. I'm number one seed. Lock me in the cage with somebody. Let me get to work. In terms of his profile, though, I mean, you've now gone from, you know, you beat Anthony Pettis, right? Jeremy Stephens, Stevie Ray, Stevie Ray, and now going to Shane Burgos. I mean, all a fairly big uh, UFC names, each and every one of them. Of course, you fought previously in the UFC as well. I imagine, you know, matchups like this are a good boost for your profile. We like taking out tough guys, man. So um, if it can earn me some more fans, uh, I'm all about it. So bigger the name, better for me, right? Definitely. So let's talk about the matchup. I mean, we kind of know what you bring to the table. We kind of know what Shane brings to the table. I don't think there's any way this could be a boring fight, but what do you envision? Uh, I hope he tries to stand up with me. That, that's the hope. Uh, he started, He, you know, he fought Yamato and he wrestled him the whole time. So he might, he might try to take me down and lay on me, which isn't going to work. He might try to stand up and throw blows with me, which isn't going to work. So um, I, I'm excited to, to get in there and see what happens. Well, definitely looking forward to it. I mean, how important was your run? We, we, know what you can do on the feet and you had that experience in boxing where you, you've gone over and found success there as well how important was that to the clay collard we see today um i mean i've been boxing my whole life you know I, i've been a i've been a boxer since i was six years old so um you know, I got to jump over and do a little professional boxing, which was cool, but uh, it's it's just who I am, man. I, li I like to strike. Is there still opportunities there that you would like to pursue? And I, I'm thinking especially of, you know, the PFL has signed Francis Ngannou, and Ngannou now has a boxing match with Tyson Fury later this year, maybe early 2024. We don't exactly know that know the date yet but if there was an opportunity there would you still be willing to go over to boxing especially for like a spot on that undercard yeah man if the money's right uh I, you know if i'm gonna box somebody i i've boxed the best of the best already you know um so you know, if i'm gonna box somebody the the money's definitely got to be right well, we know the money is right in the PFL, the million dollars waiting for you at the end of the season. I mean, you've gone into the playoffs once before. Is it difficult to stay focused on what's immediately in front of you and not kind of let your mind, wind, mind wander to the what ifs of, you know, what a million dollars would be like for you? Um. You know, I'm I'm focused on the task at hand, which right now is Shane Burgos. But I've been hoping with that fight with Mercier in the final since the beginning of the year. I've been, you know, thinking about that and and trying to manifest that. So, um, I'm right now I'm focused on the task at hand. But in the back of my mind, we're we're excited to get in there with Mercier, Mercier, the Canadian gangster. Definitely. And I was going to ask you about OAM and the other side of this tournament bracket. He's fighting Bruno Miranda. How do you see that fight playing out? Uh, you know, I think OAM's just too smart of a fighter. I think he just, I think he's going to do just enough to win. Um, Mar 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 
kind of have to come out and, and, and really put it on him and get after him right away. Um, I, I don't see him beating OAM personally. I'd love to see it, but I don't see it. <laughs> Fair enough. So that would be a very cool final. You and OAM definitely looking forward uh, to that possibility. Looking forward to this fight with Shane as well. And before I let you go, I mean, if you've got a finish in mind, I know you want him to stand with you uh, if he's willing to, but what's your prediction for the outcome here in terms of a finish around anything you got? Uh, I, I've been, I've been telling everybody round two, I'm going to take them out in round two. So that's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. Good stuff. Well, Clay, looking forward to it. Thanks very much for the time today. Best of luck in the fight. August 23rd, the PFL lightweight playoffs continue. Thanks very much again. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Clay. You have a great day. You too, man.